Coffee Dad, all right, it's Twitter. And what I've done is I've gone into the network, specifically slowed down the internet. The reason I wanted to do that is because what should happen when this scroll hits the bottom? Right? What, what is the normal user experience that you see? Right? I don't know if you've seen this website before. Um, it's a pretty popular website. Um, Google, you heard of this before? Right? I want to look up something like MDN docs. Right? What happens when I get to the bottom of this page? What actually happens though? Nothing. Right? I have to go, great. You have to be really desperate if you're on page two of Google, right? <laughs> then you click, and then what? Full page refresh. Yeah. Is that a good user experience for every single type of website? No. Here we have Twitter, right? And when I get to the bottom of the page, right? Look at this, spinner, spinning, rotten spinners, right? And all of a sudden, I have more data. I can go all the way to the bottom, wait for more. Oh, wow, that's hilarious. Um, <laughs> and then, finally, more. Cool. What do you think is actually happening here now that you've done part of all of the DOM challenge? What do you think is happening? Well, don't explain it to me in code necessarily. Just try to explain it to me in what you think is happening in regular old English. Okay, that's good English. Keep going, keep going. It's better to try to finish your thought than just trail off. It happens to everybody, it happens to me all the time. Don't worry, yes. Pretty close, right? Pretty close, right? Um, yes, you want to try? Yes, 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 right, exactly. In just regular old English, when my user scrolls to the bottom here and I have no more tweets, I want to do some sort of action. That action is to hit the server and get more tweets, create the elements, and then append those elements right to the page. Cool? Did that make sense to you? Did I use words from this morning's lecture that you feel like, you know what, if I had the data, if I had a more tweets const that was an array, I could iterate through them and append them properly, right? We've, we basically did that with those dank memes, right? Except these are tweets, and this is like a billion dollar company. They're doing the same thing. It's just what you're learning as a tool. So, that being said, let's uh, not speed this, like speed this internet back up, right? Out of control, Boop. online, bam. So, let us talk about events, All right? There was a mention of a event listener. Oh, whoop, that's not the one I want to blow up. There was a mention of an event listener. But what is an event really? All right, this is kind of like the outline of what we're going to go through. But what are web events? This is like the actual official definition. But really, an event in the web is exactly what you imagined it to be. And that is something happened. Something happened. That's it. Something happened on the web page. All I need to know is there's a lot of things happening, right? So if I were to go here, what is happening here when I do move my mouse? I'm just moving my mouse, right? Does the browser need to track where my mouse is? Absolutely, because what's the difference between clicking here and clicking this like button? It's where my mouse is, right? Where my mouse is. So you see how this is red and now, oh, it's not. Did I do anything except hover over it? Right, you like those words? Yeah, you have done some CSS before? Yeah, very good. 
So it needs to be listening for where the position of my mouse is, as does the position if that position is over a button, over a div, over something, then change that CSS. Once it leaves that area, change it back. And that's all it's doing. So these events could be anything. I move the mouse. I press the down key. I press the space bar key. I click this image or I click this link. I probably should have done that. It's fine. All right? What about here? What happens when I click this magnifying glass or press enter? What did I just do? I did not set up event listener, but what did I just do when I clicked this magnifying glass or pressed enter? I, I clicked really is an event, right? But I also submitted this form. How many of you done did the search bar in your like Mati project, All right? What was that? The search bar was a form, right? With just a little sneaky input in there. And then what? What comes up on the other end? Matu wasn't that long ago. Stop the badness. <laughs> right? Params. <laughs> All right. Uh, your Matu instructor was terrible. I hope you trashed him and or her on that survey. <laughs> so that's what events are, right? Let's go back so we have the official definition, but in case of the web, events are fired inside the browser window, specifically inside the browser window because is the website tracking my movements now? No. It, it, the website, Chrome is not tracking my movements now, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's on to us, he's on to us. Uh, really, what is tracking it now? Probably the Mac OS, because I want to make sure when I click on something, Adam is probably tracking it now, right? So in terms of the web, it's the browser window. That should just make sense, cool? When I'm not in the browser window, I can't fire off events not inside the browser, cool? You ever press enter, like not outside, outside the browser? Does it submit your form? Right, cool. So this might be either uh, a single HTML element, a set of HTML elements, or the document loaded into the current tab. Those are all just random events. Not random, but those are all events. Things that we can be looking at in terms of events, I noticed, I mentioned earlier rather, user clicking on the mouse button, submitting some sort of form, pressing on the keyboard, maybe when the website actually finishes loading. Who has been to a website and then two, three seconds later, the images come up and they actually load? Right? That's when the website's actually done loading, right? <clears throat> even though you see certain things sometimes. We can try it um, if we go really fast. I think like Airbnb. Wow, perfect. You saw that? It loaded, but then the background image didn't finish downloading because look at this. Look at the quality of this image. It's insane. It's like, <laughs> it's a really, it's like super high. It's like 8K photo right there. And it took a little bit longer to download. And so a form being submitted. Right? This is bold because, and I don't want to ruin this for you, but I will. Right? The internet is just, it's just forms, forms and lists most of the time. Maybe a calculator, right? Because think about it. What is this? Form. Cool. Ready? Let's put New York, New York. Cool. Let's go, let's go today, boss. Check out tomorrow for my one day sit down. Um, great, cool, look at this powerful, powerful website, right? What happens when I click this button? Oh, hmm, it probably what? Added some map to my page, and then when this, what, slider, toggle is off or false, remove it. It's all just conditional logic. Something that you learned in mod two when we did that conditional rendering, if that current user is equal to that user's ID, then the delete button is there. Remember that? So what if I just do this? Watch this nav bar here, right? When I scroll to the bottom and more loads, did anything else like reload? No, this is a better user experience, not just because it's nicer, but because in today's world, data, 
is so important. How fast your internet is, and then ultimately how fast your website experience is. If I'm in the subway, and I'm a dirtbag, and I'm trying to get on this website in between stations, sometimes I'm hitting that 3G, right? Let's be real. This lecture will not make sense to those that are like listening to it internationally. It's so popular. Um, what's going to happen, right? It doesn't reload all of this. It doesn't download everything. And so because of that, it uses less data. So how many of you are like concerned about your data plans? Okay, all the people that were born in the 80s, right? We're like grandfathered in on some like 4G plan. Sorry, unlimited folks. Ridiculous, right? But they will throttle you after a certain point and it will slow you down. So I don't want to reload everything, only reload the parts that I need. And so you want to start thinking about that user experience in terms of how you're going to write your JavaScript. So let's get back into events and a form being submitted. Cool, let's do this. I have a cool application, all right? Wow, wait for it. No, your eyes are not crazy. The colors are changing. Can that happen in HTML and just CSS? Yes, it can, all right? JavaScript doesn't do everything. Stop the madness, right? It's a trick question. That being said though, if I were to click something I need JavaScript to handle how that click happens and then what to do with that click. HTML and CSS cannot handle that on their own organically. All right? So if you were to break it down to all your friends, because I know you want to explain how much you've learned or read every day, is HTML is actually what displays on the page. CSS styles it, and JavaScript gives it all of the functionality and behavior. How your website performs is going to be that JavaScript. Cool? And that's going to make or break your website. Yeah? Who was like in love with their Rails apps before they added CSS? All of you. That's right. Very good. And then after you added CSS, you're like, oh, it's pretty nice. Now let's add JavaScript, and now let's make it really interactive and really amazing. So what I want this to do is I want to type in this comment, right? Type, type, type. And then I want to hit this submit button, and then I want it to add here so that I can see a list of all my comments, similar to a feature you've seen in Slack, Twitter, Bookface, right? Instagram, very good, thank you. All right, MySpace, Zanga, Sconex, all the popular media, social media websites. I'm old. Um, and that's what I want it to do. But what happens when I actually submit this page? You want me to find, you want to find out? Yeah. You're just waiting. Great. You guys don't remember? You built Rails apps? Cool. Oh no, I didn't, did I not delete all the results? I did. There's nothing happening here. Okay, great, sorry. I didn't refresh the page. Yeah, I, <laughs> I had it working, just so I don't walk into this lecture blind like an idiot. Cool. Cool, so what happens is I click this and then what happens? The comment just kind of goes away. But what really actually happened? What happens when you just submit a regular form? Talk to me in Rails, right? I have a user new, I put in a username, I put in a password and I hit submit. What happens? Right, who knew that? My form by default will send some post request to the server. A post request to where though in the form? What the, exactly, what the action is inside the form, right? Do you remember the form tag? And then you did one of these? Did one of these, oh, hello, balls, right? You did one of these, oh god, darn it. And then you did action equals to, and then you did custom route, some cool route, do you remember this? And then, if I did not have this in here, what would it default to? Post, right? And then in order to do anything else, what did I have to do? Stop playing, y'all Y'all forgot already, huh? Input, type hidden, method, underscore override, and then you change it to put patch delete. Rails did it for you, Rails did it for you. It's magic, right? Cool, so if I know that this form submits by default, right? Hmm, when I write something in here, 
and I click immediately and it refreshes, what should I be trying to prevent? That default action, right? First thing is, before we can even get into that, what do I need to grab a hold of in order to prevent the default action? We just learned about this morning, right? I can grab the DOM elements, right? What do I want to grab here? If I grab the text that I'm inputting, is that related to this submit button? Do they know about each other? That's an interesting question, right? Does this input, right? Input, input, right? If input, right? And then best friends with button. Cool. I was going to try to write a coding joke. It didn't work. Sorry. Do these inputs, does the input know about the button? A little tricky to answer, right? But let me phrase it this way. What knows about the input and the submit button? The form, right? So if I'm going to listen for some sort of submission of the form, what element should I grab? If I'm listening for the submission of the form, what element should I grab? The form, right? Because if I grab just the button, and I know where you're going with that, right? It's like, great, the button actually does the submitting. But again, in the similar way, the button doesn't know about the inputs. So when I listen for a submit on that button, when I do that submit, what are the params on just the button? Nothing. I need the inputs that go along with that button, all right? I know, I, I thought that like for the first time too. It should be the form, so I want to be able to grab the form. So let's do this. First of all, good code does what? You need to test it, right? I realized that immediately after I asked that the question was impossible to answer, I'm sorry. So you should test your code all the time, always and forever, all right? Is this console log coming up? Good. So I know my JavaScript is properly hooked up to my HTML, and my JavaScript is running. First thing I want to do is I want to try grabbing something. I can either try grabbing a div, or I can try grabbing the form directly. How would you approach this? Let's look at the HTML. Yeah. Yes, we need to look at the HTML first to understand how we can possibly grab something. Cool? So here's the HTML. Does anyone want to grab anything in particular, anything that stands out to them, or just the form? The, the what? You guys want to just grab the form? Yeah, let's just grab the form. Cool. So how would I grab it? Wow. Select door, uh-huh, and it just with? Is it dot or, or hash? Why? It's an ID, right? Hash, comment, form. Cool? And there it is. Safe and sound. Cool? Let's take a look at this form specifically and see in this form I have a div, I have two inputs. All right? How would I get to this div or how would I get to this input and which one do I really want? Well, what I want to do is I want to take all of my cool comments inside this input. When I hit submit, it appends them to the bottom of this page right here. Yes. I could, all right? Maybe I'm not phrasing this properly. Let's do this, ready? I just want to grab a div, and I just want to see whether or not I can grab it, or maybe that form. So what I did was, I did this document, that query selector, and it returned this form. Cool? If you remember, in day one of JavaScript, your code that you write and where you write it matters. So in the browser, it works perfectly fine. Inside this, I will say, is this cool if I just do like this? No. You guys should all just be like, stop playing, all right? Cool, all right, so now I have access to this. Can I 
log form. Oh, that's not going to work. I don't think so. I think in the string it'll just literally say form. <laughs> right? Can I log this form just like this? What should I see? Line seven, null. Line seven, form is null. Well, I want you to start thinking through what could possibly be giving me this error, right? Let's start thinking. I'm getting null back, right? So I grab this form, set it to a variable, and then I try console logging it, and it comes up as null. Hmm. Could it possibly be that this form does not exist when I attempt to grab it? I'm getting some like, blank stares, right? <laughs> Let's read over the HTML one more time, right? Cool. Head tag. Great. Title. Import my CSS import and execute my JavaScript, then, then the body of my HTML. If you remember from the last lecture, I had the HTML, the script tag, on the bottom. Do you remember that? And I said that I would like answer why I did that later. Let's try it now. The script tag is on the bottom. So the JavaScript will run where it is imported. So how can we possibly solve that if I want my script tag, which is best practice, by the way, to be inside my head tag? What should I be waiting for before my JavaScript fires? I should be waiting for that page to load, right? That makes sense. How can I wait for my page to load? What would I be looking for? Well, I know that I have a web event that can listen and check to see whether or not the page was loaded. Oh, I, I thought I blew your mind for a second. You're just yawning. I thought I said something crazy, and you were like, and then it turned to a yawn. That was embarrassing for me. I'm sorry. Embarrassing. Cool. If I were to look that up, I can simply see that it needs to be right on the document, right? As we remembered earlier, the DOM, I can listen for that page to load. So how do I listen for events? Right? You guys did the challenge? Or should I just Google it? I need to be listening for the event to happen, right? So add event listener. Did I have I never wrote that? Great, and what am I listening for? Something called DOM content loaded. Hmm? It's DOM content loaded, meaning on this document, what I'm saying is I'm listening for an event. What is that event? The event is DOM content loaded. And what do I want to do once that DOM content loads? I want to do something, right? And how do I tell JavaScript to do something? I write a function, right? Boop, 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 cool. And now I can simply put in all my code inside this. What this is saying is, again, the document is waiting and listening for when the DOM content is loaded. After it finishes loading, it will execute the reference to a function. This is a what in JavaScript? Callback. callback, right? This is a callback, yes. Is there any advantage for using the arrow syntax for like your using box and that is a mouthful. Um, to answer, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the reason uh, I'm going to leave it there unless you have a very specific question, is there are a lot of rules of what, not a lot, there are several rules that arrow functions will do over the keyword function. 
Um, and we will get into all of them when we talk about what this is. Oh, this is going to be your favorite. Do you remember Self and Ruby? Yeah. Except much, much better. <laughs> I say better because I want to trick you into thinking it's better. Uh, there's just a couple rules to it. Uh, it will become more intuitive as you practice it, but I promise you, when you first get it, it will punch you in the face, and you're gonna be like, this is nothing like self. Evans, you lied to me. <laughs> and then when you go to mod four, you can smash the, uh, the instructor on mod three. Cool? Yeah? But there are, there are important differences that I really, really want you to take away. So for now, we know that to add an event listener, it listens for the type of event and then a reference to a function. How do I know that this is a reference to a function? Well, the truth is, is this function invoked? Ooh. No, I'm just passing it a reference to a function. Meaning, I can simply say, right, um, function do stuff. Bloop, bloop, bloop. All right, and all it's going to do is console log something, right, in a string. Do, 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 do. Cool. I've declared this. Can I just take all this out and just go, great, do stuff. I need to pull this out. Oop. Oh, actually, I never closed this. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. Cool. Why would this work even though I'm referring to it up here? Hoisting, right? Because that function keyword says that it will be available even before it hits the line. Do you remember? Cool. So what is do stuff in reference to this? What would I call this? It's some, some JavaScript terminology, right? The callback. This is just a function that gets called after something else, right? It gets passed in as a function. Cool. So are there any questions on event listener, what it's listening for, and a reference to a function? What is the difference between this and this? Yes. I'm invoking do stuff. So meaning when it hits line four, it'll just run do stuff immediately. It will not wait until the DOM content's loaded. It will just, oh, I see do stuff invoked, boom, run it immediately. Here I want to pass a reference to a function. Cool? So I'm going to kind of get rid of this. And I'm simply going to bring back the 90s. Cool? Are there any questions so far? What I really want to do is I want to get that form again, right? Form, oh man, embarrassing. Document dot query selector. And I'm looking for a the comment form, right? Bloop. Cool, and all I want to do here is log the form. And there it is. Now, thinking through, right? I've got some text in here. I've got the submit button that I know sends a full page refresh. What do I want to do first once I grab this form? Do I like that full page refresh? Yeah. So, first things first, right? Uh, grab that form. The second thing I want to do is stop that, what, instant, full page, slow, data eating refresh. Cool? And how can I do that? When does the refresh happen? When I type? When I click here? When I click this button here? When I click outside? When I click what? Submit. Right. So, hmm, what does submit sound like to you? Right? It sounds like an event. <laughs> so I want to listen for an event on what? The document? On the form. Right? So I can do form dot 
add event listener. So I'm adding an event listener on this form. Cool? And how do I do that event listener again? What do I want to pass it? What do I want to listen to? A click of the form or the submit of the form? Because I could click the form all day. Does that form submit though? Right? I want to listen for the submit. Right? And then what is the second argument? The callback function, right? Boop, boop, boop. Did I name this function? No, right? When I submit this form, what information do you think this function will need? Information about the, about the, come on, help me out here, help me out here. Just help you out here, just help you out here. Yes, this function will only do something based on the event. So this function probably will receive details of the event, all right? All we want to do right now is just simply console log event, right? Because I'm not sure what that really is right now. I just know that when the user submits my form, I'm going to run something. I don't know what it is yet, but I know that something will happen. This function, this callback function, will get details of the event, right? That makes sense. So let's take a look. On refresh, I do log me, please. Bloop. Huh. Weird. Did you take a look at this console real quick? Log, log, log. Did you see it? It logged and then it did what? That full page refresh, right? Trash. I want to prevent that full page refresh. So by default, the form will do what? Refresh, right? It will send the post request and then it will do a full page refresh. I want to do event and I want to immediately prevent the default. What does this look like to you? A method? So if that's a method, is this a reference? Is this done? Or I need to invoke it. Cool? I keep saying these things because you will, you're going to make these mistakes. I make these mistakes. Yeah? So now that I've prevented the default, let's just take a look to see if it in fact stops that full page refresh. Ready? Stop. Ajima, right? No? Cool. Wow. I, I don't see the console log? No, no, he's talking about the code. Oh, I don't. Right, right, right. Because I haven't wrote the code yet for it. Well, we haven't wrote the code yet for it. All right? But now this event is being logged. Let's take a look at the deets of this event. Okay, bubbles, right? We'll talk about that a little bit. Target. Hmm, what is target? I don't know. Let's find out. What is event.target? Target. target. Oh, it's the form. So the event is what actually happened, and the target is the form. Cool? Which makes sense, because what am I actually adding the event listener to? Form, right? So now that we've prevented that default, I stopped that dirty, nasty, instant page, refresh, reload, data eating nonsense. And what do I want to do now? How can I get the data that's from here onto the bottom of this page. What are the logical steps here? What are we thinking? Yes. Just the form, but specifically what? All right. Specifically the input. Cool. How can we grab the input from this form? Yeah, you had something. Perfect. Well, why don't you try answering and then also add on to? Okay. So I think you would you would want to grab that information that is the different variable using the dot Okay. Absolutely. Then grab the div variable that it's calling and what it is from. Okay. Yes, you're missing an uh, important step, and we're going to walk through it right now, right? But that is like the exact logic. So 
I'm not asking you to think like computers, but generally speaking, right? I need to grab the info from the form, specifically the input. So I need to grab the input. Oh, wow, that didn't, that didn't come out as what I want. Oh, God. How can I grab the input? Equal to? Can I just throw it on the document? I can. I probably don't want to overload the document. All right. The input is nested under what? The form, the target. So event.target. Or if I wanted to, do I have access to form here based on what we learned about scope? All right. So you can either do event.target or form. As we've just learned, they're the same in this case right now. Cool? So form dot what? Right. I want to go inside this form looking specifically for go to the HTML. Absolutely. In the form, how can I grab this input? New comment. If I did not have new comment, how would I grab it? I would just literally, I would just add the ID. Right. And I say that jokingly, but also not at all, because maybe. So I would just add that div ID right back in there. Cool? So now I can get access to it. Right back into my JS, I would be looking for what? The new common ID, right? So, cool. What should I do now? Immediately test. Absolutely. Great response. <laughs> cool. So how can I actually test this input? Ready? How can I test it? What would I need to go through? What would I need to do? I need to submit the form, right? So I can trigger all these other events. So let's do that. Trigger red. Cool. This is the input. Did I get it? Yeah. Great. Hmm. What did we learn about inputs? They have what kind of attributes to them? ID? Type, placeholder, but also, what else? Well, let's do this. How about I drop a little hinty hint? Instead of placeholder, I do this. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> right? So here, I know an attribute of value will give me what is actually written inside this input. Yeah. In the same way that we did that image tag and we checked the source attribute, I can probably get the input tag, right? I haven't done it yet, right? And do the value and ask for its value, right? Yes. So that being said, let's get back here. I have the input correctly. Just clean up my little console logs here. Boop, boop, boop. I can do input dot value. What is this? What would this give me? It would give me whatever the user typed inside the input box. Right? Do I need that? Great, so I have officially grabbed the input. What is the next step I need to do? I want to assign it to a variable? I'm only asking because like, I want you to start thinking this through, right? It's painful at first. It really is because you kind of don't know what you can do, but I want you to start thinking through what you want to do and then look up the code to do that, right? That's like the thought process. Every time you need to implement a new feature, what I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to, in English, take whatever the user inputs here, and I know how to get that. I know how to grab that. And then I want to append it onto this, what? This div or this container, this comments container here that I saw in my HTML. So 
can I input text directly right onto the HTML? Can I append it? Can I add onto? What we've done before is actually replace the inner text of a div that already existed. Right? Is that what you want to do? No, we need to make an element first, right? So make that element I want to hold my input. So I can just do document dot create element element. And what do I want to make it? Do I want to make it a div? No. Right? I mean I can. But what would make more sense? Like a paragraph tag, right? Do I have access to this right now? No. Can I just do para equals? There we go. Stop the madness. Right? So I have this paragraph variable, right? Great. And what do I want to do with it? Now I want to change its text on the inside as opposed to grabbing a random div and changing its text and saying inner text. And I want to sign that what? Something? The input.value. Can I just do something like this? Cont user input. And then change this to user input. I could, but that code is disgusting because I'm only going to use this like one time ever. All right, so let's go ahead and change that right back. The reason I, I say these things is because I want you to start thinking, God bless you. Shut up. Um, I want you to start. I would just start thinking through your code, right? I'm not going to just make all these variables all the time if I'm only really going to use them once. The exception to that is this is kind of gross, right? And it's kind of not really readable necessarily. So I can make it more readable by saying this is the actual input tag. Specifically, it's that input tag that I grabbed, and I'm going to grab that input tags value. The code is a little bit more readable now, as opposed to doing this, right? Yeah, you guys like that? You like that? No. Yeah, nobody does. Don't do that. Cool? Not that it doesn't work, it's just that when you make your variables, why are you making them, right? Just this. Because all I'm doing is copying this and replacing this, right? This right here, input tag dot value. Am, am I really making it that much more readable? Not really, right? So is it something that you feel is worth the extra memory to kind of assign it an extra variable, right? I want you to start thinking through these things, cool? So when I make that element, that I want to hold the input, I simply add the what text I want to the element I just made. Some of the grammar Nazis out there, right? Now, finally, what should I do? That's right, test. Nice try. Almost there. You'll get it. All right. So it's working. I don't know. Huh. Is that what I want? That's exactly what I want, right? I want this like p tag with the text that I put into here, right? This is what I want between the p tags, right? This working string is just like what I added extra to the console log to differentiate it from this form and this hello lols, right? Are there any questions so far as to getting the user input from a form that exists, creating your own element, and then adding what the user wrote to that element we just made and why we did that? Right? That's just the thought process. Let's look at these comments again. First, I want to grab the form. I got to stop it from doing that full page refresh, that regular default action. So prevent default. I grab the information from the input. Right? But I need the input tag that has the info. I create my own element. 
then I add the value from the user input to that element. Now that I have a working great element with the user's input, finally I should append it somewhere on the page, right? But where on the page do I want to append it? Look at the HTML. Cool, where would I want to append possibly the comments? Yes, 10 points to Gryffindor, cool? How can I do that? First, I need the get that container, because how can I append something to it? I need to actually get it first, right? So simply, thank you, comment container, cointainer, equals to, Absolutely, very good, all right? Cool, so I got that from here. So here, now I have this comment container, I can simply comment container dot with the, the paragraph that I wanted, right? Cool, let's finally see append that child Append that input, right? <laughs> JavaScript is just as tricky as Ruby. Cool. Yeet. We will get to delete later, right? What happens if I hit refresh, though? Everything is gone. No, I don't even know no old James. Ah, oh, this is such a bad user e exp. Why? When I submit this form, this. <laughs> This input's still there. Terrible. How can I get it to go back to normal? What word would you use to say, hey, go ahead and take that input, take that form, and sure, clear is a good one, but I'm looking for another word. I can, I can take the input.val and set it to empty. I can. Right? And I love that logic. So simply, I could take what? The input tag, and I can set its value equal to empty. I can do that right at the end. But then I can also take the form. Because what if I had more than one input? Yeah, that's real nice. Thank you. I made it myself. Power full. Well, I'm calling this on what? A form. Form, which is form, which is a method that is built into this node element. Specifically, form. Do you think I can reset a div? No, probably not. Right? Can I reset an h1 tag? Yo, that. That, that don't make no sense, right? But I can reset a form. So each node will have sometimes unique methods attached to it, right? So, did anyone? Go ahead. Yeah. No, it just clears out anything in the inputs. It sets it to empty string. What do you mean on the page? It's, I, I'm confused about, do you know what he's asking? I think I I'm confused on the question. Number one, it's a constant, why the hell am I allowed to change this? Oh, okay. Okay, firstly, right, because 
because something is a constant, it's not really like a true function. If I just can't uh, reassign or redeclare that variable, I can still manipulate it, right? If it's an array and I make it with a constant, I can still dot push into it. Right? That's fine. As long as I'm not assigning or redeclaring that variable. If I wanted to create a true immutable constant, I, I would have to use object dot Furthermore, the constant form on line seven is just a reference to some element in our tree. It's just, it's just a, yeah, it's just a pointer to an object. Yes, because object. objects are passed by reference or passed by value. Right? They're passed by reference. Cool. So if I do something to form, does that do something to this? Yes. I believe the question from day one was, why would I want to pass by reference? <laughs> oh. Does it make more sense now? Okay. Okay, well, we could sit down and take a look at it. But what's happening here is that I'm assigning this variable to equal this object. So when I do something, all right, like uh, reset the form, all right, this actually also gets reset. Does that make sense? Because it's not pointing to two different things. That's why passing by reference is really important. Yeah? Otherwise, this would make, in Ruby, a separate object. So when I do form.reset, the DOM form that's right here won't actually change. So it needs to be the same thing, the same pointer in memory. A shizzle. Yes. I didn't touch the data. No, 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 no. All right, and this is my fault. Yeah, this is my fault. So right now we are in a persistent list environment. What I mean by that is all this JavaScript is simply going to affect the behavior on your website. But notice we have not made any requests to the database. We haven't affected the back end. So when I refresh, everything goes away. It did not persist. We will learn Thursday and Friday when I introduce you to Ajax and how to touch the database and using asynchronous actions, like for example, how Coffee Dad runs asynchronously with this uh, extra sort of like get request that we can affect the database and then make those changes more permanent and last after the refresh. Cool? That's like the next step. This class is so strong. Usually everyone's like, oh my god, uh, events. And now you're just like, cool, events, got it, great. Let's mess with the database. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Exactly. Great question. So, <laughs> all right, are there any questions so far on the thought process as to how we did everything here? Is there a much simpler way? Um, to be honest. Oh, are you? Are you gonna, uh, <laughs> I bet you all have really gotten tired of me saying, "Who likes being upset?" Right? Um, who likes being upset? Great. There, this is about as clean as it can get, right? Basically, I'm listening for the submit of the function, right? I make sure I grab what I need, and that is the values, and then all I do is I make a new thing add the value to the new thing, and then append that new thing. All right, that, that is like literally the absolute bare minimum steps. All right? <laughs> that sounds more confusing, right? And then I reset it, right? And it reads very much like the step-by-step -step process, and I keep referring to this procedural thinking in JavaScript, and that is in the beginning, right in the beginning, when I said, great, from here, I want to take this input, hit the submit button, and then add it to the page. Isn't that exactly what we did? I was able to first listen for the submit. 
I stopped that immediate page refresh. Then I grabbed whatever the user typed. I made a p tag to put whatever the user typed into, and then I just added that p tag right onto it. Right? That's like the procedural way of thinking about it. And so as you start to go from, hey, how do I take this input and put it on the page? Start thinking, what information do I need? First, I need the input. Right? And then what is going to trigger the action? Well, the submit button. Once I submit, the user is saying, I've locked in what I want to write, and I want that text appended to the page. And then it's a matter of stopping the normal post request, and then taking the data, and then actually appending. Cool? Yes. It will reset. It will do a full page refresh, right, on default. Your form will submit by default. It will make a post request to the custom route or wherever your form goes to, right? Form four, like user slash new, right? So, I'm sorry, I, I didn't really answer your question. I'm, I'm sorry. What was the question again? Yeah, so, that, so it clears out all the inputs within the form. Meaning if I had multiple inputs in here, like username, password, social security card, credit card numbers, all the normal stuff you sign up for a website on. Um, when I hit submit and I do form.reset, instead of grabbing each individual input and then setting it to an empty string, if I do form.reset, every input within the form will go back to zero. Or original state, right? If I had a placeholder here, it would, yeah. Uh, Trash, right? Terrible. Terrible user experience. And with JavaScript now, you can prevent that. Cool. So what I want to get into next is, uh, if there are no further questions on how that happened, how to think about it, and then ultimately step by step what to Google. How do I get user input from a form, MDN? Right, step one, and then what? And then like start thinking through, right? These are all the steps, things that I would Google and then make it happen, right? So the next thing is, what happens when I click these buttons? Boop, 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 nothing, right? These buttons are trash. It says alert me, console log something, console error. Cool, what I want to do is when I click this button, console log error. When I click this button, console log something, whatever it is, right? When I click alert me, it should alert me. So what I want to do now is start thinking through that process start to finish. What's the first thing I want to do on this alert me? All right, I want to grab the alert me button. And how do I do that? That's right. Very good. Yeah, I can. I can do this. Bloop. And just go, what's this alert me button? Bloop. And it'll tell me right there. Bow. Right? But also, I can check the HTML, right? So how can I grab this alert? Mm-hmm. How can I do that? It should return the button. One of the buttons? As does everything else. Remember when I grabbed this div, this this form, it came back with ID comment form. Cool. Well, it's a attribute of the query selector. It gives you the actual element. Um, so no different than if I grab the button or form, it'll give me the attributes. Cool. So 
Can I answer a question? Or, yeah. All right. So how would I get this to do something when I click alert, when I click log, when I click error? A vent listener, right? That would be awesome. How many vent listeners do I need? Three, right? Who likes being upset? OK, cool. This is when it comes through. Now, there is an important concept, very important concept, right? So if you're like kind of tired, just like you know, stand up. It's like very important. Right? Stand up. Like ludicrous? No? All right. Anyways, something I want. Whoa. All right, cool. So, whoa. Well, learn to use the internet <laughs> level two. <laughs> you should read these readme's. They're amazing. All right, here. Event delegation. Oh man, it's like I have to do this. Great. What is event delegation? Here. What happens is every single event, not every single, like 90 something percent of events will have what is known as this like event bubbling. Who has heard of this before? Well, bubbling, right? What I mean by that is, right, here we have the document, the HTML, the body, in the table. In the table body, we have two table rows. So if you're not good at HTML, just replace table and T body with divs. These are all just nested divs. Cool? Cool. Div. 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 Right? When I click this div, this one, which is a child of this div, right? What happens is, first, on this click, everything is always listening. What actually happens is nothing. When I add the event listener, I'm simply going to add a function that will allow me to do something based on that event. Right? So when I click all over the page, the page knows I'm clicking, but does it do anything? No. So event delegation and event bubbling simply means when I click this, the capture phase is that when I click this div, on that click on any single event, anywhere, at any time, a capture phase happens, meaning it goes from the document to the HTML, to the body, to the div, 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 right? Sounds like a song, <laughs> right? The target phase, right, phase two, this blue, means that I've hit the div that I want. If there are children divs from here, it will not know about it. It stops at that target. And then naturally, it bubbles back up. What that means is the response of that click goes back up to the document. The reason this is useful is because if I click this div, does the document know about it? Yes, the document knows if I click this div. If I clicked this div, does the table div, wow, that's a terrible, know about it? Yes. If I click this div, do these child elements know about it? No. No. Are there any questions so far as to just event bubbling? What the capture phase is, hitting the target, and what the bubbling phase is. All you really need to know is that all the parents will know about the action. So if I click this div, does this sibling know? No. Only the parents will know about it. So this is useful because instead of creating three separate event listeners, I can create one event listener and listen to see, did I click the alert, the log, or the error, and then do something? That is the power of the event listener and event delegation. So the parent, right? is the parent div of all of this. So when I click this button following this event delegation, if I click this button, does the parent, the helicopter parent div know about it? Yes. So let's find out, right? If what I'm saying is true, I want to add an event listener to this helicopter parent. How can I do that? Well, first this code is trash, right? So it's messy. I don't want to be, I do not want to be inside this event listener. 
because if I add an event listener inside an event listener, what do you think will happen? They'll stack, right? Every time I, I click submit, the other event listener will fire. Cool? Because it's in the callback. So I want to make sure I'm outside of this. I'm going to leave all the comments in here for you. And then I'm going to start a new event listener. On what? Just for now, parent div. I'm, I'm just writing these because they're like, that's what the name is for you to learn, right? Like, I would never name something parent div. That's like really too, it's just too generic. All right, I'll put like helicopter div or something. Cool? And then I would just grab it with what? Uh, div, container, div? Parent, very good. Cool, and then what do I do right after that? Absolutely, console log it. <laughs> nice try, nice try. And then this is paleo, cool. Do I need, what do I need to do to make sure that this fires? I have to wait till the DOM content's loaded. So really kind of nothing, right? <coughs> right? Trick question, cool. Let's take a look at the console. There it is. Is that what I wanted? Yeah. Yup, skirdoodles. Apps two. Oh my god. Right, cool. So I have the parent div, right? Great. What do I want to do with this parent div? I want to add an event listener, right? Cool. And what am I listening for? A click. And what do I want to tell it to do? I want to tell it to do something, right? So that is a function. Callback function, yes. Blue? Right? Yes. Even more popular vocabulary. This is an anonymous callback function. Cool? Why? It has function has, right, Game of Thrones style. So, all right, what does this function need to know about? The event, right? Here we have shorthanded to E because I'm lazy, and you'll see a lot of stack overflow shorthanded to E. So when you're like, oh, what is E dot, like, prevent default in a form? It's just the event, right? In the same way that I did it exactly here, they just shortened it to E. So as you troll through Stack Overflow, Quora, you'll see E. Cool. So what is E? It's the event, right? It's the event that actually happened. And what do I want to be listening for? A click, right? So let's break this down. Because this problem is a little tricky, right? I want to start thinking out loud that procedure of how I'm going to go about it, right? I'm clicking this parent div. I'm listening specifically for a click on what? Right? So, great. This parent button now has the click listener. Inside the click, specifically, let's find out what is, what is E? Actually, I, I probably should have said something else. And that is, I'm adding on the parent div, which is helicopter parent, an event listener of click. And I'm simply going to log E, right? Where is helicopter parent? It's this whole div here. Does this div know anything about the comments container or comments? No. What about the body? A little bit, right? If I put a click listener inside helicopter parent and I click here inside the comments container or here inside the form, will it know about it? No, it's only inside what's highlighted here. So let's prove that. And that is I have a click on the helicopter parent div. So if I were to refresh and here's the body I'm clicking, right? And where is the helicopter div? It's 
find it. Uh, oh god. Oh god. All right. Yeah, there. Helicopter div. That's that's it right here. So it will only register clicks inside here and console log them. Does that make sense? So if I go, watch where the border is, right? If I go, sorry. Right, only, I have to like be obnoxious, right? Because only inside the helicopter div will that start to console log the event. Cool? So I can simply ask it for the target. Remember, the target gives me what? What it is that I actually clicked on, right? So let's take a look. Boop, 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 boop. Is that more useful information than the mouse click event, like just nebulously? Right. Hmm. It looks like these buttons have what unique value to them that can separate them from buttons from each other. This data name, right? So in here, can I do something like if the event dot target dot what data name? Hmm. Well, let's let's do this, right? Let's do this. Hmm. It looks like, and I'm just gonna give you off the bat, it's not gonna work, right? What can I do with this information? I have data dash name. What do I really want to do? I want to reference this button based on data dot name, right? How can I then do what? What would you look up? MDN. Right, MDN? Cool. But specifically what? Grab like a button with like data dash name, something like that. MDN. Wow, uh, that's not the one. Using data attributes. Cool. Because what's going to happen is this. Uh, whoops. What's going to happen is I was going to do e.target.data name. Right? Let's just try it. Uh, yeah, it's not going to work. E.target.data name. That's not going to work. It's going to give me some sort of error. So now I know that I need to look up how does this data dash name work. It doesn't work like a normal attribute. So when I Google it and look it up, I'm going to see right this using data attributes. Cool. HTML syntax. Some random tag with data.columns, data.index, data.parent, data.name, whatever it may be. How can JavaScript get access to them? Oh, I have to call dataset.columns, not data-columns. I have to call dataset.index number to get this. So having just learned that, it's dataset-name, dot name. Right? That's going to give me access to. That's going to give me access to error log or alert. Right. So if let's bring this back. Right. Is equal to. What is it? What's that first one? All right. Alert. Cool. Alert. Then do what inside this if. Let's make that alert actually happen. Right. Let's just alert. Right? Whoa. Eat. Eats for cheats. Cool. No, it's dataset.name. And here, according to the docs, if I have a data dash columns, right, I was going to run into that error. When I do run into that error, which is exactly what I'm trying to explain to you, like you're going to try to do something, kind of makes sense in your head, you run into an error, and you're like, huh. This data dash names doesn't work for me. How can I get access to it? And then you're just going to do, great, I have this button with the data dash name, MDN. <laughs> right? And then this came up. This is like the third thing I clicked on, right? If they're on the same level, and let me explain data set, right? Let me just dive into data set for a second. So. Here you can imagine, right, when you iterate through something in a database, 
What's the first thing inside your database in your object? The first thing, always the ID, right? The primary key. So naturally, when you iterate through, and I did the, all those dank memes, I created them from an array. I just made an image tag, and I made all the dank memes image. But when I'm doing images from a database, I'm probably going to have image objects with an attribute of like a URL or something. So far, so good. When I create all of these images on the page, how can I grab each individual one separately, knowing what I know about event delegation? I have to separate them by ID. So I'm probably going to add, as I iterate through, some sort of image ID equals to what? That image.id. And then the source is going to equal to that, I don't know, I'm going to interpolate it, image dot, like, URL, something like that, uh, right? But you're going to get the gist of it, right? Do you, like, understand where I'm going with this? Did I lose you? If you're iterating through from a database, it's going to make more sense tomorrow. That's fine. Great. So this ID is going to be unique. The thing is, what if I just want to be able to grab it? I don't necessarily want to add IDs, because IDs and classes are used for CSS. If I start adding IDs like 1, 2, 7, 9, 13, right, that can get a bit kind of tricky. I want to differentiate this somehow, not add any CSS to it, possibly unintentionally. I want to do something like data.id, data-id. So this data set can be named whatever it is that I want in order to be able to grab it later at will. That being said, I now have access with JavaScript to what it is. And I simply did, if this data set is equal to dot name is equal to alert, then run that alert. I can then do an else if, right? But I mean, there's like no such thing in JavaScript. It's basically another if statement. But shh, don't worry about that. Cool. Else if what? Don't worry. Great. It's equal to what? Log and error. So log. What's this going to do? All right. Click me. Cool. And then lastly, I can do another else if. Paste this bad Johnson in. And what's that last one? Error. error. And then do something. Console log. All right. Actually, hey, hey, hey. All right. Bad. Muy bad. Cool. So if I click this, muy bad. Alert me. Well, it's because I'm console logging everything in Helicopter Parent. I just got to get rid of this. Cool. So nothing is happening, but it's still listening for it. Who has a better handle on event delegation and that bubbling? Basically knowing that it just means that the parent can listen for anything that happens to the child. Look, we've been lecturing for a long time. I only have like four or five minutes left to show you something really important. Do you want to take a break? Do you want to power through? Or do you want to call it for the day? Who says call it for the day? Who wants to take a break? Two, who wants to power through? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There, there, there's nothing I can do about that. All right? Quickly, quickly, before the radiator yells. Right? Cool. Here's what I want to show you. What I can do, right, here is so useful because this const ends here. Ah, that line is so good. Thank God. All right? And that event listener ends right here. What I could do is I can append these childs, right? Cool? So here I'm simply going to put appended this thing, right? Great. I can just check out what this is, and this is a p tag, right? But what if I wanted this p tag to be unique or have a class name? How can I do that? When I make it, 
I can add a class name, right? How can I add a class name? MDN. Wow. Wow. Right? Element node reference dot class name, add the class name. Cool. So here, where is the element? P tag. I can also do while I'm here. It's class name, right? Yeah, it's class name. Equals to what? Added class. Cool. So if I hit refresh on this and I add that thing, I should see added class on this, which means now I've got the power to nice try. It's going to be, all right? Cool, I grabbed it, right? So I can just const, right, new p taggy, p taggy equals to this thing. Can I add an event listener to this p tag? Sure, right? p taggy dot add an event listener. And all I'm going to do is listen for a click, pretty easy. And it's going to run a function. Thank you. Oh! Oh! Shift, enter. Cool, right? So here, what am I going to do? I just want to console log something, right? Don't get into the, the idea of console logging is that this is where you would actually put logic to something. We only stop it at console log to show you that this is what the tool can do, right? So don't think that like, oh great, I can console log. I'm the best, right? <laughs> I'm the best. Uh, whatever you spell it right, that says a lot. Cool. So if I click this, it says, I'm the best around. Nothing's going to ever bring it down. I'm the best. Cool. So I'm just going to take this code that I wrote and do it to it. Right? I'm going to rip it. Bam. Except I'm going to get rid of this <laughs> warning from the console. Right? Cool. Are there any questions so far what I did? All I did was I grabbed this thing. And then I add an event listener to it. Cool? So when I refresh, I should expect that you're the best. Right. Nothing's going to ever bring you down. You're the best. So when I click this, what should happen? So you're, the best. you're the best. Huh. 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 This is the important point I want you to know. The reason we do event delegation is because the parent will know. So I don't have to write three separate click handlers. I can simply do if else. And if you're really smart, right, you can do a switch statement, a case when, right? Like case when, like alert, log, or error, then do something. It's even better. But what I'm really trying to say is, when you add these event listeners, in the same way that we ran into that error with the DOM content loaded, when my JavaScript first loads, it's going to add these event listeners to when the DOM content is loaded. When I first load the DOM content, is there a P tag with the class added class? No. So the event listener never gets attached to the P tag. Even after I added it, added it, 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 right? And I add the p tag on the page now. When was the event listener added? When the page loaded. When the page loaded. When DOM content loaded, the event listener was attached. The fact that I created this p tag and added it onto my page, the event listener, what? It never got added to it, right? Yeah, when I click this, it, it told me I was the best, but I'm not, obviously. So, so you will run into this error. I need to point it out so you understand, right? When you add the event listener, it is when the DOM content loads. When it is first fired, it attaches the event listener. Just because I added the p tag later, this never gets fired again. 
because it only fires one time on DOM content load. So what I want you to walk away with is, how can I add an event listener to something that does not exist or doesn't exist on the page yet? Well, let's think it through. With the power of, I could simply listen on the parent for any future p tags that have a class on it. And so after I create the element, add the p tag, is the event listener there? Yes, because I added it to the parent that existed on DOM content loaded, listening for a p tag with added class. So that's how to do it. So event delegation is important, knowing what we know about event bubbling. Yes. Can you also create the event listener in DOM content to be uh, initially bubbled right after the moment it's created? What you are saying is I can add the event listener right here when I create the element. Absolutely. But every time I submit, it attaches another event listener. Which you can imagine, right? If I add the event listener here, and this is the last question, then I'll move on. If I add the event listener here, on the submit, it will add the event listener here. If I submit again, there is a new event listener. So when I click this new paragraph tag, after I've submitted three times, it will do the event listener three times because I've added event listener every single time I create it. So, event delegation. Cool? I know that was a lot of information, I appreciate it. The class is very powerful. If there's no other specific questions, that's all I have for you today.